Um, I pray that all is well with you and your families. I pray that uh, the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus strengthen you according to his will and his purpose. Most important, I pray that you know that our Lord is faithful. Um, brother and sister, I pray that you're not shaken by the things that are happening around us. Um, I pray um, uh, that you're not being fearful. And I pray that most of all, you've been encouraged, encouraged by the grace of our Lord. Uh, brothers and sisters, I got a word for you today. It's a heavy meal, but it's definitely needed uh, concerning uh, the times that we are in. But before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so hard to get into a place to receive all that the Lord has poured to us today, okay? So without further ado, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Wise Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for being a living sacrifice that we may be redeemed from our sins and be children of God that we may have fellowship to fellowship to forever. Father, we just pray by your grace and your mercy that you would just speak to us today, Lord. We long to hear from you, Lord. Give us your truth. Reveal to us your heart, Lord. That we may turn back to you in every way. We love you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Have your way. Speak to us freely. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Man, brothers and sisters. Well, let's get into this word, brothers and sisters. Let's get into this word. Let's get into the word. Now, I've been spending time with the Lord. And the Lord has been speaking to me concerning his heart. And as we see all these things that are being shaken all around us, even what happened the other, even what even what happened the other, other day at the US Capitol, even what is happening at the society in the society and the community around us, uh, through the governments, through Leaders, uh, people that are true, people that are false. As we see everything that is happening around us, we must get an understanding that God is trying to get our attention, church. As we see all of these things that are happening around us, God is trying to get our attention that we may fix our eyes on him. And if we are not walking with him correctly, to turn back to him and remain in his love by Seeing him as our first love. Okay. And as it, all the things that are happening around us, out of all the things God allowed to be shaken, God is allowing these things to happen that we may be pointed to that what matters, which is him. That our Lord and Savior Christ is allowing all these things to happen in this life that we may get a revelation that there's only one that remains forever, and there is only one hope and that there is only one truth he said that is me says the lord jesus seated at the right hand of the father heaven. and as we see these things are happening around us let us get a revelation that we are in uncharted territory us in our own personal wisdom we are in uncharted territory but God is not in uncharted territory that God know all things that is going on right now because he created all things, even the territory itself of this whole world and creation itself. So as we get a revelation that in this hour, our wisdom is uncharted, uncharted territory, but God wisdom is true territory. It's God wisdom is, is sovereign over all territory. That in all things we can gain wisdom. He can tell us exactly what is going on right now. Especially it is already written in his word as we speak. And the Lord says, son, the title of this message is Revelation. Right for ownership. The title of this message is Revelation. Right for ownership. Now, whenever you buy a house or you buy a deeds, you buy deeds to a you buy a car, you get the deeds or the title to that vehicle, then you are the rightful owner of that vehicle or that house. Okay? Whenever you purchase a vehicle, you become the rightful owner of that vehicle that you have purchased, and it is now in your name. 
Well, church, Jesus is the rightful owner of us because we have been paid for by his name. By his, we've been paid for by his blood and now we are in his name. Christ Jesus is the rightful owner of the church because he sacrificed himself on the cross, paid for us with his own blood, and now through his blood, we are given over into his name. Therefore, he is the rightful ownership of the church and the church is under his title, which is his name. Now, as we get an understanding of that, brothers and sisters, we got to get an understanding that this is the hour of revelation. That we are in the book of Revelation, actually more so towards the end of the book of Revelation. And also, this is the hour of Revelation. 2020 was the year of manifestation. Now, in 2021, God is going to even more make plain the things that he revealed in 2020, according to the prophecies of the Bible and everything that he has written before the foundation of the world leading to his second coming of Christ Jesus. Now, as we get a revelation and an understanding of that, that God is allowing revelation to happen to show that he is the rightful owner of all things. Jesus, man. God right now got everything in culmination at the second coming of Jesus. And allowing for all of these things to happen that to reveal he is the rightful owner over all things. That in, when all of these things are finished, we will know that he is God. In this hour, God is going to clearly reveal those things that are of him, those things that are not of him. There will be no guessing who is of God, who is not of God. That God is going to make everything plain moving forward in 2020, 2021 moving forward. And he's going to show that I am the rightful owner of all things. And man, you are just like the grass of the field. That I am the rightful owner of all things, says King Jesus. That I am the God of the universe, said King Jesus. And I'm going to make clearly known everything that I have told you. And as my judgment and everything uh, be revealed in this hour, men will know that I am the rightful owner of all things. Now, with that being said, church, we have to get a revelation that God is for us not against us that the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. Therefore, let us find confidence in where we're going and not where we're at. Let us find confidence in where we're going and not where we're at. Because in this hour, God has given a revelation that he is the rightful owner of all things. And because he is the rightful owner of all things, that means God is the absolute hope of all things. This is the hour of revelation. Where God is finished, rise up his remnant, issue more of his salt in the earth through righteousness and truth. That in all things, though this hour will be dark, the righteousness of God will shine bright. Because this is the hour of his revelation. This is the hour of his reckoning. This is the hour where he is allowing all things to lead to the greatest revelation of all. His son, King Jesus, that is coming at the second coming that is a few years away. Because God is... The rightful owner of our soul. Therefore, church, in this hour, brothers and sisters, Jesus said that we are the salt of the earth. Therefore, as everything is transitioning, as we are getting more revelation and as we are getting more understanding, this is the hour of revelation where God will reveal things, reveal things by his word that we have looked over in the time that we have been in. In this hour, God is going to take us deeper into his word, take us deeper into his presence, right? That we, he may reveal those things that we have missed because this is the hour of his second coming. This is the hour that he will even more so glorify his name. Okay? Not only that, this is the hour of repentance, right? Well, because it's the hour of revelation, and because this is the hour God is showing that I am the rightful owner of all things, that God is going to allow judgment to bring the world to its knees to show that his son is the greatest of all. Okay. Now, as we get, a, get an understanding that this is the hour of revelation, and God is showing his sovereign will in the earth that he, that he prophesied, now God is going to uh, awaken that remnant, but also, also prick the heart of man to show the condition of their heart, the condition of their sin, where in their own wisdom, they create destruction for themselves because they turn from the living hope that comes from God. Okay. 
So let's talk about it. The Lord had me in the book of Isaiah. The Lord had me in the book of Isaiah and the Lord was speaking to me. And this is what he said. This is what the Lord said. Isaiah chapter 1. And this is what the Lord said. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah son of Amos saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Verse 2. Listen, heavens. Pay attention, earth, for the Lord has spoken. This is the hour of revelation where God is saying, pay attention, earth. Listen, you heavens. The Lord is speaking. Okay, Like we see what happened with the election the other day, how all of these things are breaking out because, brothers and sisters, Jesus said in the last days, in the end time, these are perilous times. So as you see the chaos are erupting, not just only in America, but all around the world, then it gives me a revelation that we are in the perilous times before his second coming. And listen what the Lord is saying. He said, listen, heavens, pay attention, earth, for the Lord is speaking. Church, the earth, the Lord is speaking in this hour. Are we listening? Are we paying attention? Are we just saying, oh, this is just a normal order of things that are happening? Or this is just another coincidence? Or this is some of the things? No, the Lord is speaking in this hour. Are we paying attention? Because this is the hour of revelation when God's saying, I am the rightful owner of the universe of the whole world. Repent and come to me because I'm coming soon. And listen to what he said now. The Lord said, I have raised children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey is ma master, feeding feeding troll. But Israel does not know my does not know my people do not understand. In this hour, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus said, This is the hour of revelation. That the animals, the universe, I tell the universe to stay in place, they stay in place. Okay? The, on, the animals that get fed by their owner knows they own But Christ Jesus said, the main one that died for your sins, the main one that feeds you and gives you grace every day, you don't know my ways. You don't know what I'm telling you to do in this hour. You don't know that this, you are there paying attention that this is the hour of my second coming. But not only is the Lord saying that, the Lord is allowing these things to happen in this world to reveal the heart of those who Lord darkness instead of light. Okay? And some of us in the church, not every church, but some of us are in the church right now, right? Are 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 in a place where we are we are putting culture over God, right? And and putting things in place and voting to put things in place that's going to end in the end in the long run cause you to be persecuted because of your faith. Okay? And the Lord saying it's it's so deep that what is going on it's so deep it's deeper than Trump and Biden it's deeper than Republican or de Democrat. He said, "Listen, my judgment is upon the earth because my son is near." This is the hour of revelation that is going far deeper than what you're seeing right now that is going on in the media. This is about people who don't know my ways and don't know my ways. And this is what he said. He said, listen. He said, some of y'all in the body of Christ. He said, listen. He said, the animals in the field know their owner. But some of you do not know my ways. He said, oh, self for nation. People weighing down with iniquity, brood of evildoers, depraved children. They have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned their backs on him. Judgment is on America because America have turned their back on God. Judgment is on America because America have turned their back on the living God that gave them life. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, it said that was a great lion with eagle wings growing out of back. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, 4, God prophesied the birth of God prophesied the birth of America before America was even born. Before America was even born. When you go to the book of Daniel, go to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7, verse 4. It said that there was a lion that had great eagle wings growing out of his back. And then it said the eagle wings were separated from the lion, and the, the eagle it, it separated from the lion, and then it came a it, it, and the heart of a man was given to it. Well, Great Britain, that lion in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 4 represents Great Britain, represent Great Britain, right? Because the book of Daniel teaches us that the animal symbols in the beast represents nations. So what is the animal symbol of America? 
the great eagle, right? The American eagle. What is the animal symbol of Great Britain? The lion. So God was showing us in Daniel chapter 7 verse 4 that the lion and eagle wing were together. So God was saying that the, the, the lion had eagle wings going out of the back. So it was saying that these two nations was together. So God in the book of Daniel 7, chapter 7 verse 4 over 2500 years ago was telling us that uh, Great Britain and America was together, right? But notice in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 4 it said the eagle wing was broken out for the lion, meaning these two countries separated from the separated from each other. Is that true? Absolutely. Where did America come from? America came from Great Britain. So in the book of Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 4, God was showing us the declaration of independence, the declaration of independence before it was physically before it physically came about in this life. So over 2,500 years ago, God prophesied that America would be born in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 4. Now I think it's powerful how in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 4, in verse 4 is when the eagle wings separated from Great Britain. Also, we celebrate the Declaration of Independence on July the 7th, July, I mean July on, on July the 4th, on July the 4th. That is the 7th month, the 4th day. What was the prophecy in the book of Daniel? Chapter 7 verse 4. So God in his sovereign will prophesied that America will come into a being. The same God that gave life to America, America have turned its back on that same God. And God said, listen, y'all have turned y'all back on me. I have given you warning after warning after warning after warning and you still have not repented. The Lord said, surely enough, because I love you, I will allow judgment to bring you back to me. He said, surely enough, because I love you, America, I will allow judgment to bring you back. Hear the sovereign words of the Lord. The Lord said, you have turned your back on me. And listen to what he said. Oh, sinful nation. America have been a very sinful nation. People weighed down with iniquity. Brutal, evildoer, depraved children. They have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned their back on him. This is the hour of revelation where God is showing America that you have turned your back on me and that's why it's great chaos. Brothers and sisters, hear what the sovereign Lord is saying in this hour. Church, this is the hour of revelation. This is the hour of revelation and God is showing that I am the rightful owner of this world. But the hand of God is not just against America on America. God's hand is also on this whole world. Okay? Let's move forward, brothers and sisters. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 28 This is the truth brothers and sisters I, I know that it will be many false prophets saying, no this is not this is the truth This is what the Lord is saying And moving forward is, listen to me It's not going to get better it's going to get worse Because we lead to the second coming But what is the grace of God what is the hope of God That he is our comfort he is our peace We don't have to fear we don't have to worry Because guess what Heaven is awaiting those who believe in him And we got an exciting time where we will get new bodies we will live forever in true peace in heaven with him. So don't be afraid of what's happening. God said, listen, don't be afraid, my babies, of this judgment that is coming, that is on the earth. You just keep your eye fixed on me. You keep obeying the gospel and you keep doing what I tell you to do. Preach my word in season, out of season. I am with you even to the end of this age. Okay? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 23. Listen to what it says. It says, your rulers are rebels, friends of thieves. They all uh, grab and chase after bribes. They do not defend the rights of the fatherless and the widow case never becomes before them. Hear the sovereign word of the Lord. Many politicians in this hour, many politicians in this hour, many people high up in authority right now have taken bribes, have taken many things and don't care about the people at all. They care about the, they say they care about the people. They say they care about this but they don't have the interests of the people at our heart. And guess what? In 2021, you're gonna really, but you're gonna, those said it's those that live by the Spirit of God, you're gonna really begin to see the higher up authorities true color. Because they're gonna oppress the world through globalism. They're gonna they're gonna try to control what you do, what you say, how you move, how you operate. But they claim they're doing out of love for you, but they're doing it to try to control your life to make you worship one world government. We're gonna talk about it. God said, listen. God, this is what he said, verse 123. Your rulers are rebels. The rulers of this world, uh, the elitists, everybody up high up in the authority globally, they are rebels towards God. 
And guess what? This is the hour of reckoning. Well, God is going to allow for them to do all of these things. But at the second coming, God is going to judge them mightily to show that I am the rightful owner of the universe and the world. Okay? So what is the posture of the church in this hour? That we live by the spirit. We grow in the spirit. We find confidence in the spirit of God. We find hope in Christ Jesus through the revelation of who he is. That we may not be shaken by every form or doctrine in this hour or every circumstance of everything that will try to come against us in this hour. Because the love of God is greater than everything that we'll face in this life. Because God's love never fails. And God's love can be trusted. Because God's love is who he is and the righteousness that is by his love keeps us walking in righteousness in him who loved us. Who sacrificed himself and washed us from our sin with his own blood. Okay? So, the Lord said they are rebels. Verse 20, he said they are rebels, friends of thieves. They all grab and chase after bribes. They do not defend the rights of the fathers and the widow's case never comes before them. Therefore, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, declares, Ah, oh, I will bring satisfaction from my foes. I will take revenge against my enemies. I will turn my hand against you and I will burn away your droves completely. I will remove all your impurities and I will restore your judges uh, to what they once were and your advisors to their state. Afterward, you will be called the righteous city and a faithful city. Sometime God have to allow judgment for, our, for us to get our mind right. Okay? God, when I was when I was in the when I was in the street playing around a little bit. God had to allow me to, to face something serious. I almost lose my life for me to get my mind right. It's sad, but sometimes as sometimes as people, we don't want to turn with God. God will give us every possible option for us to escape his judgment, but we just want to we just, okay, I'm going to continue to rebel. Hear the, hear the words of the Lord. This is the hour of revelation. God is going to show the mighty of his hand. His hand is raised and stretched out. And only hope is in his son Jesus. Okay. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving forward. Isaiah 2.22. Isaiah 2.22 and it reads. Put no more trust in man who has only breath in his nostril. What is he really worth? Brother and sister, our trust is not in Republican Party or Democrat Party. Our trust is not in Trump or Biden. Okay. Our trust is in God Almighty alone, church. Let us not be oblivious to the schemes, the schemes of Satan in this hour. God said, this is the hour for you not to trust in man. This is the hour for you to truly put your hope in God Almighty. In 2021, this hour global reset, the world is going to tell you to trust in man. God said, no, this is not the hour for you to trust in man because if you trust in man, you will be deceived by man. But if you put your hope and trust in God, you will live by God through his righteousness, by his spirit. Then in all things, you will escape his wrath, but also find confidence and not be given over to fear, anxiety, or worry. Because you trust that he is ahead of you and he's sovereign over all things. Okay. Next, brothers and sisters. Okay. Next. Let's go to John chapter 5. Verse 21. We'll go to John chapter 5. Verse 21. Give me a second. John chapter 5. Verse 21. And this is what it says. One second. And it says, uh, and just as the father raised the dead and give life, so the son also gives the life to anyone who wants to. In this hour of revelation, God has given all, he's given life to those who want to know him. He's given revelation and, and grace through the spirit of God, those who want to be in the kingdom of God where he be. It. I shared this many times before. I have been taken in the spirit and I've seen Jesus sitting on a throne in heaven. Jesus is the king of heaven and the king of earth. I've seen him sitting on the throne in heaven. 
them had many face-to-face -face conversation with our Lord Jesus. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, he is the king of heaven. He is the king of glory. And he is willing to give life to anyone who will call upon his name. Life to anyone who wants to be saved from their perverse generation. Life to anyone who wants to be free from their sin. Life where you no longer have to suffer, die. You will never die again, but you will live forever in the kingdom of God. He said, in my father's house is many mansions. There is a place that God has prepared for you in the kingdom of God. There is a room with your name on it. Don't conform to this world in this hour and be deceived in this hour because you lack the revelation of God. God said, my people perish because of, because, of, because of a lack of knowledge. God, the God said, who, who won't, he who wants wisdom, seek me and I give to him generously. Come, have faith in Jesus. He will generously give you, give you the wisdom of salvation that in all things you may live for him and for his glory that you may reap the benefits of eternal life and be free from the concern and the burdens of the sins of this life that keeps us in a state of death. Okay? So he said, turn back to me today. This is the hour of reckoning. This is the hour of revelation where God is showing that I am the rightful owner of all things. Jesus said, so as the Father give life. So he said, just as the Father raised the dead and gives life, so the Son of Man give life to anyone who wants to. Therefore, if you are in a dead place, in a dead season in your life, if you are hurting, you're broken, you're going through pain, you're going through agony, you feel like there's no hope, you see the things that are going on around you, you're burdened by it. He said, come to me, thou who are laden, burdened with sins, hurting right now. I don't know where to turn. He said, turn to me because I'm your true hope. Everything in this hour is crumbly. There will, the, everything around you that you can see is false hope. But me who, who you have not encountered, who you have not seen is true hope. He said, turn to me and I will give you life. I will raise you from the dead because I, all that authority have been given over to me, says the King Jesus, who see the right hand of the Father in heaven. Why? Because Jesus said, I am the rightful owner of your soul. And my revelation I want to give to you that you may know who I am and not be worried or fearful about the things that will take place in this hour, but also the things that you face on a daily basis. Your relationship with me will help you overcome all these things that is in the front of you, that is around you, because I am 360 sovereign and I see all things through my eternal sight. Sight, says the Lord Jesus, see the right hand of the Father in heaven. Next, the Lord Jesus said, John chapter 3, verse 27. John chapter 3, verse 27. This is what it reads. We start at verse 22. It said, After this, Jesus and his disciples went to the Judean country side where he spent time with them and baptized. John also baptized in earning Nisalim because there was plenty of water there. People were coming and being baptized, and John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then a dispute arose between John's disciple and a Jew about purification. So they came to John and told him, Rabbi, the one you testified about. And who was with you across the Jordan is baptizing and everyone is flocking to him. John responded, no one can receive a single thing unless it is given unto him from heaven. He said, you can testify that I said I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent up ahead of him. He who is the bridegroom, but the bridegroom, he said, he who has the bride is the groom. But the groom friend who stands by, uh, by and listens for him rejoices greatly. And the groom Voice and, and listen greatly at the groom's voice. So this joy's mind is complete. He must increase, I must dis decrease. Okay? Listen. Can't no man live for the glory of God unless it has been given to him by, from the Father in heaven through the life that comes by the Spirit. Can't no man seek the glory of God and escape the wrath that comes from God unless he have given, give, been given freedom through the Son Christ Jesus. Okay? Can't no man receive anything glorious that comes from the most magnificent kingdom of God that never perished, that lives and endure from heaven unless God gives him revelation and the opportunity to encounter that glory of his presence. And the only way to do that, the only way to do that is through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Now, in order to, in, in, to, in order to encounter that glory, we must decrease in our flesh and increase by the Spirit. John said, my joy is complete because I see the one who I have been testifying about. Therefore, church, in this hour, our life has to testify about the one who is coming at his second coming 
that in all things we decrease, decrease in pride and increase in humility, decrease in ourselves and increase in, 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 in and allow him to increase in us that our heart may exalt his glory and push out the gospel through a repentant life that in all things the harvest may be retrieved because the harvest of our own heart have been retrieved by the one who saved us by his sacrifice. Jesus. Why? Because in all things God is reconciling this world to himself because he is the revelation and the consummation and the culmination of all things then in all things we may know him that he is the great I am. Okay? Next. John chapter 3 verse 30 and it says uh, oh see. Oh, excuse me. We already went through it. He must, we he, we must decrease. He must increase. Okay. So now that we got that out the way, brothers and sisters, now that we got that out the way, I'm gonna give you a little prophecy one on one. Okay. Prophecy one on one for discussion of the day is called perilous time. And this hour, brothers and sisters, make sure you are, are fully obedient to the gospel. And being obedient to the gospel is also studying the prophets of the Bible, the prophecies of the Bible. In this hour, it is very important and it is very, it would be a great, wise, and necessary thing to know and understand and begin to grow in the prophecies of the Bible. Because in 2021, in this hour that we are in, a lot of these the stuff that has happened around you is prophesied in the Bible that shows you that Jesus' second coming is a few years away. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, it is very important that you don't continue to gloss over and look over the prophecies of the Bible. This is the hour for you to know the prophecies of the Bible. Because if you don't help know the prophecies of the Bible, it's like you ain't got it's, it's like you ain't got your glasses on. Okay? The prophecy is like having a watch on your wrist that let you know what time it is. But if you don't study the prophecies of the Bible that Jesus is giving to us so we can know the time they are in, then we don't know what time it is. We're just walking around, don't know what time it is, but we go to study the prophecy. Oh, it's about to strike midnight. It's about 12 o'clock. Okay? So, knowing the prophecies of the Bible is like having a watch on your wrist, but also knowing the prophecies of the Bible, it's like having your glasses on where you can you won't just look at stuff like happened at the, the US Capitol, how they was breaking in and doing all this stuff, or how People were rioting and burning communities, Antifa and many other people high up in authority. You won't just look at these things or people just doing what they do. When you go to read the Bible, he would say that these are perilous times, right? He would tell you that people group will begin people group. You will see these things in the Bible and you begin to examine yourself like, hold up. This means my redemption is near and it produced hope where well, you won't fear these things, but rather you will rejoice. Because Jesus said, when you see all of these things, know that your redemption is near. That you won't look at the destruction that's going to happen as of a burden, but rather you will look at it from a place of a, of a place of excitement because your redemption is near. Not that you were rejoicing in the destruction, but you were rejoicing that your redemption of salvation is near. That you're going to be home in your eternal place, your true place, where you truly, you're truly at home at because the earth is not your home. Okay? The next thing, the 107th Congress that was sworn in made a prayer to a false god. Right? Hear me, brothers and sisters. The other day at the, the 117th con 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 um, conference, they made a prayer saying prayer, amen, amen to God and a woman. Hear what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? There was a prayer at the 117th con Congress, a prayer, and they prayed to a false god. They prayed to a false god. Okay, they prayed to a false god, okay. and and brothers and sisters, a lot of these leaders, and we've talked about these people, we talk about those people before. It's not the person per say because we know the fight is not against flesh and blood, brothers and sisters. But hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. Okay, a, a lot of people that's going to go in office are pure globalists, believe in one world government, to the point where the Congress that swore that was sworn in prayed a prayer to the to a false god. Okay. So what will be what will happen in 2021? The remnant is gonna the remnant is gonna preach the word of God regardless. But what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What do they want to do to America? Let me tell you what they want to do. The new people, the new administration that is getting in office, okay, okay, people that are in Congress, the House Speaker, and one of the leading people in there, right? They want to water down the gospel. Okay. They want to pass legislation 
They want to pass. They want to pass. They want to pass legislation that would make you say, make it okay for you to preach the gospel, but you can't say Jesus is the only way to heaven. They want you to preach the gospel, but say same-sex marriage okay. They want you to preach the gospel, but void the truth, the absolute truth that make the gospel what it is. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, in this hour. They're going to begin to isolate the one world government will begin to isolate believers to the point where in America, they might allow you to preach the gospel, but they want to, they want, they want you to preach a watered down gospel. Okay? That is what is happening in America to the point where they want to pass legislation. This is what they want to do. They want to pass legislation. Okay. They want to bring all this gender stuff in to say that you can't stand firm on the Bible. What well, the Bible said, this is not right. You can't stand firm with it. That the new administration that is coming in, that is what they want to do. They want us to water down the gospel where it won't even be the gospel. Because God said, if you add away from my word or you take away from my word, then it's no longer my word. So actually, they want to blindly rob you of the gospel. But we go church, the gates of hell will never prevail against the church that they can't rob us of the gospel. Therefore, we must stand firm on the gospel. This is the prophecy update. Okay? The Revelation 13 tell us that there was a beat. Let me read it to you. Let me read it to you now. I'm going to read it to you and we're going to get up out of here. Okay? I'm going to read it to you and we're going to get up out of here. Revelation 13. So you can know what's going on in this aisle, brothers and sisters. I know this is not a sexy message that this is true. But the new administration that is getting in, they are globalists. They believe in one world government. They want America to be a communist. They want America to be fulfilled with communism. But why is the communism so important? Is it got some do? Listen, brothers and sisters. I pray you hear what this is the hour of revelation now. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. Prophecy 101. These people have been working on one world government for the past 70 years. And the one world government is here. Where soon, in the next few years, they will begin to they will begin to move forward in the, in this 2021 they will begin to reset their agenda to, to say right now you will hear leaders in America to say that we all need a healing this is what you're going to hear the talk of the world it's been so much COVID-19 it's been so much social injustice they're going to be like we all need a healing let's all be one that's what they're going to say to you they're going to say we all need a healing and they're going to begin to say let's all be one people but what they're going to be saying is let's all be one world government that's what they're going to be saying to you. The beasts have risen out of the sea, and the one, which is the one world government, Revelation 13. The beasts have came out of the sea, and the one world government is coming, it's on the land now. In the next few years, in the last three and a half years, they're going to get their teeth to enforce things. And in reality, issue the mark of the beast. Okay? You with the Holy Spirit, Spirit is saying to the churches. Right now, we're in the area of false people where everybody wants a healing. Oh, man, we need a healing. Let's all be one. This is what Revelation 13 said. I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. He had he had ten horns. He had ten horns and seven head. And on his horns were ten diadem. Hold on one second, brothers and sisters. So so we can see a little bit. On this head, uh, he saw a beast. It said, Reverend 13 said, and I saw a beast. I saw a beast. Um, I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had 10 horns and seven heads. On his horn were 10 diadems. On his horn were 10 diadems. And on his head was blasphemy, blasphemy name. Uh, the beast I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like a bear, and his mouth was like a lion mouth. The dragon gave him power, his strong and great authority. Okay, so right now, Revelation 13. Revelation 13 tells you the plan of the one world government. Revelation 13 tells you the plan of the one world government. So in this year, the World Economic Forum, they want to global reset the world. They want to global reset the economy. They want to uh, global reset uh, uh, your jobs. They want to global reset. They want to um, they want to instrument. They want they want LGBT to be more included in the workplace. 
they want to uh, reset with climate change. Okay, these are the, all the things that they are talking about. The globalists are talking about doing with the global reset, and this is what they're going. This is what they. This is what they're planning to do, and the Bible teaches us what they're going to do. What they're going to do. So in 2021, this is the hour of one world government and global reset. So watch church 2021. You're going to begin to see the rollout one world globalist agenda. Watch people in it. Watch people in the Congress. People like Chuck Schumer. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, watch all these people now. Watch them. Watch what they begin to say. Okay, don't just take my word for it. Read the Bible. The Bible tells us exactly what they're gonna do in this hour. Okay, we are in the hour of one world government. Church, it's time for us to wake up. It's time for the women to preach the gospel like we never have and live for Jesus like we never have before. Because these are the things that's gonna happen in this hour. Let's see. So let, let's recount. They want to uh, reset. The, they gonna, They want. Matter of fact, the Vatican, the Pope just signed signed a um, signed a deal with. Uh, he just signed a deal uh, uh, with high up elitists, with Bank of America and people that could uh, Visa and Mastercard for inclusive capitalism. Okay, Inclu inclusive capitalism is. Where it moved for, from a a, uh, a move where they want to move capitalism from a shareholder to stakeholder, where there will be no private ownership, where you won't privately own nothing, but the government will own all things, so they can control every area of your life. The Vatican just signed that with uh, the Vatican, the Pope just signed that with inclusive capitalism, where they want to take the world and reset capitalism to inclusive capitalism, right? Where universal income and all of these things, but. The, the, what they're doing is they taking they saying inclusive capitalism, but it's really socialism. They just blanking it, blanking it. They putting a blanket, a blanket of inclusive capitalism to deceive people to make them think it ain't capital. To make them think it, to make it, to make them think that it's not socialism or communism, but it really is. But they just putting capitalism over. Okay, why do they want capitalism and socialism so bad? Because socialism leads to communism And communism will allow for governmental agencies To distribute wealth around the world Where they control the sovereign money of the world Why is that important? Because that is what the global reset is about The global reset is about the one world government The United Nations and the Ten Kings That's going to take over the one world government To seize authority over the world economic power the whole point of the global reset is to get control of the world wealth. The Holy Spirit is saying to the churches, they're going to say we all need to become one and we need to put our money, our resources to tackle climate change, COVID-19, and also the next crisis that's going to break out with World War III. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. The whole point of the global reset is to cease the economy of the world because they know people love their money. And if they take control of people's money, they know people will be willing, easily willing to give over their, their control of their personal lives to them. Out of a sake of peace for everybody. That is the lie of Satan what he's going to tell people in this hour. Why this important, brothers and sisters? Even more so, there are even articles where people in the Middle East have been talking about Israel is planning to build a holy temple. They have not started yet, but their articles are surfacing where they're talking about Israel is planning to build, build a holy temple. Have they started yet? No. But why should that perk our ears up? Because the book of Revelation tells us that in this hour there will be a third temple. And here you got articles talking about they're planning to do it. They have not started yet, but when we see these articles going to popping up, that means we should be watching because all of it is a sign of the second coming of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. I pray this word is a blessing to you. And be sober, be vigilant, don't be deceived by politicians that saying that they care about you and stuff like that. Listen, there's only one person that truly care about us. That is Jesus. He died for us. Let church, let us come together like we never have before. Let us put aside our differences and this disunity. And let us come together in truth. Not compromise. Not come to come together in false doctrine. No. Come together in the absolute truth. And most importantly, the God is going to bring the true world together. Because in this, idol, idol, in this hour, true believers will be isolated. Watch it. In 2020, move forward, you begin to see true believers isolated. But God is going to allow that isolation to happen so he can bring the remnant, the true believers together. So the enemy will be trying to use it for evil, but God is going to use it to bring us all together. That we will be radical like we never have before. And Satan will never prevail against us. But it also will separate those who 
who are false, who don't love him, who really have love and unrighteousness in the darkness of this life. Brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. I pray that this word is a blessing to you. I know it's not a sexy message, but it's the absolute truth. And it's gonna and it's happening as we speak, and it's gonna happen more. Continue to tune in, and when the Lord begins to reveal more stuff happen. The Lord is showing, showing, showing many things before they happen. And we're going to begin to talk and expose a lot of stuff before they happen. The Lord is going to begin to say stuff before people even do it. And church, I pray that you tune in. Because we're going to begin to talk about things before they even happen. And you'll be ready for it before it even happens. And, and it's going to come right from the Bible. Okay? So, Jesus love you who sit on the throne in heaven. And brothers and sisters, let us get ready. This is the call for endurance. Saint, this is a call for great trust in God because he loves us. And he'll never fail us. If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord, I thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' person that we pray. Amen. 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 If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to the kingdom of God. And church, let us remember, it's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. America, America, America. We're not waiting on the end time to get here because the end is now. God's hand is stretched out on America. God's hand is stretched out on this world. Repent, America, because he ain't pulling it back to his second coming. Those who turn to God will have grace with God in this hour. Those who rebel against our God will find eternal judgment at the end of the seven year period. Brothers and sisters, let us find hope in God and trust in Him over all things. Again, Jesus loves you. He got a great love and grace and mercy for us. We don't have to fear. If you have fallen, get back up, keep running. Now it's not the time to throw in the towel. Now it's the time to keep running because it's time for eternal salvation to retrieve us to Himself. Retrieve us to Himself, who is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Tomorrow is not promised. Do you know Jesus? And that's the time to know him. And remember church He loved us Love us so much Even 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 To the death on the cross See you next time brothers and sisters Goodbye America Repent